Hello my friends, my name is Lindsay and I run the blog Books for Christian Girls. Welcome to or welcome back to the little corner of the internet where I talk mainly about Christian fiction and welcome or welcome back also to another reading vlog. I hear a beagle. Never mind, she's not coming to come join us. This is the second of my June reading vlogs. June is my birthday month and so I thought it'd be kind of fun to share about books that I'm reading in my birthday month, hoping that they will all be good reads. That's not happened, but I have done really good keeping up with my June TBR, which I had shared in my prior reading vlog, but an update. Actually, you know, first I have a clip that I was going to include in my last reading vlog of like a little mini book haul and like talking about a recent updated read. I'm going to insert that in this video because the first reading vlog, I'm currently editing that and it is too long already. So I'm going to insert that now. Hi my friends, entering in this clip, it is actually the 12th June, I hear a beagle coming. Excuse my appearance, it is so hot. Hi Daisy. Did you eat? Was it good? Yeah, did you eat your food? <coughs> That's what she does after she eats. She sneezes. I'm going to sneak this in though because I am not presentable <laughs> enough to, bless you, to do a proper reading vlog intro because it is so hot. Y'all, we just got back from running errands, you're going to smell my book mail just got back from running errands. It is 105 degrees outside, it feels like, because of our humidity. It's miserable. I'm not going to wear makeup in that kind of weather. But we have a little book haul to do. Yes, yes we do. Oh my, oh, thank you so much, Daisy. Okay, but first I got two book mails before we left. Hidden Meaning by Elizabeth Adams. This is one of the books in the Secrets of the Mary's Library. No, Secrets of Mary's Bookshop. Something to do with books. It is the last book I need in this mystery now. I am so excited, Daisy. Yeah, are you excited too? Oh, hey, I'll hop off the package. And then I also picked up from Pango Books, Legacy by Shannon Messenger. This is book eight. Yeah. Hajima. This is book eight in the Keeper of the Lost Secrets series. And so, so funny thing is that I bought this book off of Pango Books, right? And then I received a message from the seller and she was watching my video when she realized that I was the one that bought this book from her. And I just, that was so cute. That was such a day maker. So hi, Rachel. Thank you for selling me your copy of this book. I've already read it and I've really enjoyed it. Well, I mean, really enjoy it? Yeah, I've been enjoying the series. I'm currently about 70 something percent through book nine and I'm getting a little nervous because cliffhangers are approaching and the next book isn't out so like my binging will stop with this book I'm currently reading. So yes, a little book haul, an update on the Keeper of the Lost Cities series. Did I say that right? I don't know if that's been a struggle. I have finished book nine on that a few days ago. I made a mistake binging the series. Now I have to wait to who, know, who knows when until the 10th book comes out, but I'm looking forward to that one. I am now anticipating that with many others. It's been a fun series. I can see why so many like it. On my TBR, I was going, last night I DNF'd Countershade by Kelly or Keely Rose Waller. This was a review book. And I was really struggling to get into it because it's all about this main girl who is about 22 and it's set in 2028, which was an interesting, like 2028 and 2029. So that was interesting. But her parents, when she was eight, was uh, they were put into jail for money laundering and like dark web kind of things. And so it's heavily focused on that. And I was having such a hard time getting into it already. And then her boyfriend, I didn't like her boyfriend at all. And then they kind of like broke up midway. And the timing of that was terrible because he was a stinker and his mom was a piece of work. There was just a lot of things I really wasn't enjoying and then there was the b word fully written out and you know i'm just not yeah no thank you so totally dnf that when i got to like 68 percent in so that was unfortunate i was just really struggling with all the lawyer talk all the law talk on like the the different ones that had to do with money laundering and i was just really struggling to be interested in it so that one has been DNF'd and is crossed off my TBR. Now today I don't know which exactly I want to read. I think I have a few books on my library's app waiting for me to read. And let's see, that's these four books that were not on my actual TBR, so there goes that. Out of the Embers by Amanda Cabot. 
The Blackout Book Club by Amy Lynn Green. This is on my actual TBR, I think, for this month. I think I included it because I've had this book checked out from the library. A Thousand Heartbeats by Kira Cass. Here's the thing, y'all. I own all of these books, and then A Code of Valor by Lynette Easton. I own all these books, but yes, I did check out the ebooks from my library's Libby app because I just really prefer ebooks. But if I like the book, I want to own it physically. So I don't know which one I'm going to pick up yet. I want to finish out the series. This is book three in the Blue Justice series. And I liked one of the first two books, and then the other one I wasn't a fan of, but I don't remember which is which. I own one of them. Oath of Honor, I think that's number one. I think that's book one. So, like, I enjoyed that one. I kept it. I don't think I enjoyed book two because I no longer own it. So I want to finish out this series. But the problem I'm having is the cover is just not enticing me. There is a, a guy that looks like he belongs in a Hallmark movie on this cover. And it's just not enticing me. So I'm struggling to pick this up even though I want to finish the series. I'm not supposed to judge a book by a cover. But we all do it. It's fine. It's not fine. But I'm learning. And am, am I learning? I don't know. So I have these three books I could potentially pick up. It is... Thursday. I never told y'all the date. It is Thursday. What day is today? The 15th. So one of these maybe this week. Hi you. A couple of these maybe this weekend but then hi. Hi. There goes the beagle. But then I also have a few review books I want to read including this one. I had this one actually on my TBR for the beginning of the month and that's With Every Moment by Janie Roche. I apologize, I don't think that's how you pronounce either of the author's names. This, from my understanding, is not any romance, though, so I think I'm going to have to really be in the mood for that. I don't know, I'm kind of in the mood for a historical or a fantasy. So I'm kind of, I really kind of want to pick up today A Royal Quest by Melody Carlson, which I hauled in that last, uh, the first June reading vlog. And it's shorter, so I think I might actually pick this one up. Maybe, but I have other ones, and I keep looking on Kindle Unlimited, and I keep finding books on there, too. I also have The Healer of the Brigade Brigage by Michaela Bush that I want to read. So I don't know what I'm, I'm either going to pick up that one or this one, or maybe a totally different book. I don't know, but I will update y'all when I have something to talk about. authentic girly. household today. Hello my friends. It is Sunday, June 18th. We just got home from church. I have not been doing great at updating y'all on what I've been reading. I just haven't been feeling like I want to talk to the camera. <sighs> Sorry, but I have been filming clips of me reading, kind of. So let's see. I read yesterday or long ago, Daisy May, 
yesterday or long ago and the author was Ginny Sor? Sor? I think it's S-A-U-E-R and it was, I had seen different people talk about it unfortunately I didn't know it was connected to the author's other book I want to read which it's Father's Day, Dad's watching the Cubs game good job Cubbies so <laughs> uh what was i saying oh i didn't realize it was connected to the author's other book ru ru di gook something like that like my brain wants to put it into korean so i'm not sure how like it's supposed to be but that basically is like a swear on someone's life like i promise but like if not may my ancestors be upset with me it's like that kind of thing so that's like a cinderella one which i've always wanted to read it since i heard about it because cinderella but it's like fantasy spacey kind of Cinderella so I was like oh that sounds really interesting but it's like 440 pages which I'm aware I've been oh you can't see them in frame no you can't see them in frame the secret keeper not secret keeper the keeper of the lost cities series and those books are massive and I did the lunar chronicles but for some reason review books when they are over 400 pages my brain starts to just shut down because I have to note the content when it's that much it's insane so I've been pushing that one off but I didn't realize it was connected to this one, so I did, I think, have quite a few spoilers for that book. I'll still probably read it at some point. I gave that one three and a half stars. I really liked the concept and like the writing style was really charming. So we follow two best friends. One, it's kind of a gender bent or a kind of reversed Aladdin retelling, and that was really fun. But then her best friend is kind of more of that Pride and Prejudice. But it's very much set around a library and like the main girl because she does not know her biological father. She doesn't really have a status so she sneaks into this library that she's not supposed to be going into. And it was a fun concept. I definitely think I liked the beginning and everything more than the rest of the book. The main two girls... Okay, hi friends. Sorry, my card was full. I don't know what I was saying. I read it and I don't know where I was talking about but it was really interesting to see these two point of views of these two best friends and how they viewed the other because and I liked them both in their own point of views but when they viewed the other I got a little frustrated with the other best friend which was interesting because they gave so much grace and understanding of the others insecurities and quirks so it was interestingly done in that way I did like seeing the two best friends point of views and then of course they've got their separate love interests I just, there was different things I struggled with, and because this was in the middle of a series, or it's not, I, it doesn't even say it's a series, but obviously they're connected, and it was hard, because like, things weren't explained, it was very much a figure out how you go, if it gets told to you at all, so I struggled with that, and there was something else, but I can't recall, because that's been like two, three days, sorry, sorry, I meant to already film this, but I'm delayed, then, I crossed a book off of the TBR for June, and that was Victoria Grace, The Jerk Face by S.E. Clancy. I had prior read this book in 2020, which I thought it had been prior to that. It was 2020, and the author gave me an advanced reader copy that was not the final copy, so there was some content differences between that book and the final copy and she let me know like hey certain words were removed and that kind of thing which I really appreciate when an author lets me know that because I am noting the content on the copy I received so I had and I overall enjoyed the story but I did a while back buy a physical copy because I wanted to reread it and it's not on Kindle Unlimited and my library didn't have it or anything so I just went ahead and I have to point out real quick the endorsements for this crack me up I think it's okay. Wait, there. I think it's okay, author's mom. I'm trying to read backwards and upside down. This isn't going well. Usually, I prefer murder mysteries, author's dad. That just made me laugh so hard when I saw that. I've noticed that when I got done with the book and it was really, it was fun. This is just an entertaining book. I think if you like Ginny B. Jones, you would enjoy this book. It's about a girl named Victoria Grace, and I don't think she's a jerk face, personally. I, I thought she was okay. She's sassy. And it's just her and her mom. The father is not in the picture. But the mom is a police officer. And they just have a really unique relationship. And I think for some, they might not. you might not like how they just are very sarcastic and sassy and banter with each other. But I thought it worked really well. And I don't know. I, just, I liked that aspect. I thought it 
it went well for the plot line and their relationship, the dynamic. And then, let's see, Victoria has to do a hard thing or a project for her youth group and she gets signed up to help at a nursing home and then she meets Marigold and you know it's just the helping out learning about history making friends and then there's a new boy at her school Corbin from Texas and it was just neat you know it's fun I do wish it was just a little bit longer because there was one part towards the end that I was just like I wish we could have had a little more discussion on that but elsewise it's not too bad I would put it honestly kind of similar to Ginny B. Jones is YA books in terms of content because like there are mentions of kissing and making out and then there's certain Daisy May there's certain more minor cuss words used but like I know more conservative families probably wouldn't be a fan of that so this is like yeah if you're if you're okay with the content in a Jenny B. Jones YA book then you probably would be fine with this one I think they're honestly about the same that one but I did really like this one I laughed multiple times it was fun to reread it and now I crossed the book off of that shelf yay the rereading shelf we have one off I will be keeping this book yay now I I'm in the middle of, what is the title of it? How many times can I read a book and I don't know the title of it? It is The Heart's Choice, book one in a new series by Tracy Peterson and Kimberly Woodhouse. And now Confession, uh, Kimberly Woodhouse, I've been enjoying her trilogy and that's mainly why I picked up this new book because I really enjoyed her th th the trilogy that was set at the Grand Canyon that I've been talking about a bit lately because I've read them all all three books the last few months and I've been enjoying those. I, I liked, them. I did enjoy those past tense. I've already read them past tense, Lindsay. But with Tracy Peterson, I've attempted to read a couple of her books in the many years I've been in Christian fiction, but I've never been able to get into them or finish one. I have a couple on my TBR that I have high hopes for, higher hopes for, maybe not high, but just higher hopes for because they sound interesting and like there's in that time period I typically like I'm not a big Alaska Montana person so I was kind of iffy on this one being set in Montana I don't know I'm not a cold weather girl we've discussed this before it's like a hundred and something outside but I'd rather have that than snow or ice or blizzards just no that is not how the good lord made me so this book is set in Montana, but what interested me was the main guy is a librarian, which that's not the typical thing. It's set in 1904, and then the main girl is the first ever court reporter for the state of Montana, like first female one. And it's been really interesting, and now a murder has happened. I will say it is really predictable, but a simple plot line isn't bad. I'm overall so far enjoying it. I think what's been interesting, though, is... For the first 50% of the book, our main couple, Mark and Rebecca, they're not even, like, they're like, yeah, he's, he's handsome, she's pretty, but I'm not interested in that right now. I'm not interested in having a relationship and settling down. They both are very focused on, they're, they've come to this town, it's his technical hometown, and then she's come here for work. So they're not really interested in each other in a romantic way for the first 50% of the book, and they're just truly good friends, and I thought that's been adorable. And now it's starting to change in the sense of, they said they just want to be friends, I gotta, I gotta, like, get rid of these feelings of this crash, I have to. So that's been, that's cute right now, I'm at that part. So, so far, not bad. We are seeing the point of view of a villain, if you will, which is very predictable and like after this we see his one point of view and then a bit later we see his point of view and we are given his name and it's like oh yeah it's who you thought kind of thing there's there's only so many characters it could be kind of thing so we're having a bit of that what's been interesting though is the faith content has been really heavy in the sense of there's been a lot of it not heavy topic but heavy isn't a lot of it with the main girl though she's gone to church she doesn't really understand the concept of having a relationship with God. And so she's been really reading the Bible and discussing it with the, the judge that she works for and his wife who have kind of taken her in and kind of like become her first official friends in the area. And then with Mark, the librarian, who's a good friend of theirs. So there's been a lot of faith discussions and 
her sincerely wondering and curious but wanting to figure things out from her for herself and that kind of thing so that's been really interesting i think some people might think it's too much especially like if you're already a believer you already believe in jesus you've already accepted him as your savior kind of thing you might think it's too much but i'm okay with it in all honesty i thought it was refreshing to see someone not mad at god or that kind of thing. She just never really thought of it kind of thing. And so I, I like that difference. It's it's a, a simple read. I keep saying that, but it's true. It's just, it's been pleasant so far. We'll see if it keeps up. I've got about 38% left, I think. So I'll try to update y'all then. <laughs> I'm trying to find all the many different angles of my room. But hi friends, it is Sunday night. I just finished, hang on, let me scooch closer. I just finished The Heart Choice by Tracy Peterson and Kimberly Woodhouse. Yes, Kimberly Woodhouse. And you know, I thought it was pretty good. It is a very basic plot, very predictable, totally guessed who the villain was and we're told after a couple times of his point of view. So even though there is a murder that happened and our main couple's trying to figure it out, we're told it as the reader, so it's not really like a trying to solve it with them kind of thing. It's more like a hurry up and catch the bad guy already kind of mystery, if that makes sense. And it was a simple plot. Again, I keep saying that, but that's honestly, it was, but that's not bad. That's not wrong. Some days you just want that and I happen to be in the mood for that, so this was great. Sundays are always very busy and always I'm always tired on Sundays. So reading a book that didn't require much brain power was great for today. Honestly, I liked it because I think the main couple, I think had they been instantly attracted to each other, I would have been a little more frustrated and annoyed. But I really liked that they had the whole, they were like, oh, this is a nice person and they just want to be friends but they didn't want a relationship at the time so they're just going to be friends and i know that's so common in fiction books but it's not believable for a lot of those because they're instantly attracted to each other and they're just like you know so this couple it was not that way and i really liked it i believed them when they said they were just going to be friends i'm like this is actually nice this is gonna actually work out isn't it and for the first 50 percent of the book that's literally all it was was them just being friends and her discovering how to have a relationship with god and that kind of thing so i really liked that aspect i thought it was just very it felt very wholesome kind of jeanette oak kind of style like that charming because of the faith content there is proper grammar in this <laughs> they talk in proper grammar in this book so not completely Jeanette Oak style but kind of just that lots of faith content sweet store sweet romance story kind of thing it, it was pleasant you know I enjoyed it I'm gonna give it four stars I don't think it's for everyone but it is one of the ones I think younger Lindsay would have really really enjoyed and I'm discovering those more and that's kind of nice to see at the same time because when I read Kimberly Woodhouse's other trilogy that I've been talking about that one reminded me of that kind of thing so you know I enjoyed it not bad not bad I'm not sure what I'll pick up next probably something tomorrow but I don't know so I will see y'all then when we both find out hello my friends it is it is June 19th Monday I think this is going to be the end of this reading vlog because I don't know what to read next and I kind of want to have we're going to start getting stuff for a birthday idea I had tomorrow so I kind of want to have that be its own vlog with my actual birthday you know so I don't know what I'm going to read now but I'll probably put that into the next reading vlog 
guess I'm gonna have three to four reading vlogs this month. That's totally fine. I did want to give a couple updates though. So though I updated y'all about the Heart's Choice last night. You know, that was fun. It was a it was a pretty good book overall. I liked that they had that friendship first. That's always nice to see. I am DNFing with Every Memory by Janie Ro Roche. Somebody said it rhymes with crochet. So I'm DNFing this one. Uh, so first things first, I didn't realize it had to do with a very traumatic car accident that killed a woman's son. Car accidents are very triggering for me. I can't, I can't do that. But then there's also an author's note at the beginning that says this novel contains difficult and potentially triggering topics such as death of a child, sexual assault, adultery, and divorce. And unfortunately, those a lot of those things are just hard for me to read about, especially right now especially right now. I just, I can't, I just can't, I can't, I can't. And there are days you have to know your limits because with a, something like this, I typically would be like, oh, it's, it's probably not that bad or it's probably, it probably won't affect me, but then sometimes they do. And so I'm trying to learn that if there's a warning for that and it's not really a book in BFCG's target age of nine to 19, even the older in, I, I don't need to read it. You know, if I'm not insanely interested in it, I don't need to read it. And I've heard this is a pretty heavy book. And just with this author note alone, like death of a child, I can't do that. I can't do that right now. I can't. And then sexual assault's always been triggering. And it's set after a tragic car accident. And see, when I looked it up online, it just said a tragic accident. And I didn't necessarily think it was a car accident. And that totally would have changed had I requested this book for review or not. So unfortunately, I will be passing this along to someone else, but I will not be reading it. It's just, yeah, there's, I can't, I can't. So I don't know what I'm going to read next. I have quite a few books out from the library. I've got these four out. Can you see it? <gasps> Y'all wanna see my Korean tea set? I haven't tried any of them, but look how pretty they are. I got it for Christmas and it's the Osolok, Os Osolok, Osolok tea brand which is very popular in Korea and I keep wanting to try them but I just randomly will open it and sniff it because it smells good but I still haven't tried any of them I really, I really ought to but the packaging is just so gorgeous and it's got Korean and, and English but like it's just beautiful so I just have it on display because I love it so much and then also a fun little thing on my shelf is this cute little Snoopy water bottle that my best friend gave me that's got this on it because if you know me I love Snoopy and obviously I love daisies I can't use it though I'm scared it's gonna get scratched or anything so it's just like a statement piece in my room and apparently it changes colors Peyton if you're watching this I don't think you're watching this do you watch my videos I don't feel like you watch my videos you watch my videos hmm if you don't watch my videos hmm any you, you wouldn't know either way I guess but I love it it's adorable so it stays and then I've got the little Kindle here with the daisy so yeah I got a lot of daisies I'm not sure what I want to read though. I don't know. I might honestly pick up a thousand heartbeats just because I'm curious about that. I keep having friends rave about that. So I'm curious. Review book wise, I got to come up with something though for the end of the week. I do also looking at my June to TBR have the reread books. Let me grab like, let's see. Every Bride Needs a Grim, I wanted to either reread this trilogy or The Governess at Highland Hall by Carrie Taransky. I don't know which one I want to read. I've enjoyed both of them a lot and I'd like to reread them. I just don't know what I'm in the mood for. I really don't know what I'm in the mood for. So, you know, I'll probably just do, like, try a chapter of each. But I'm going to save that for the next reading vlog. Sorry to leave you all on a cliffhanger. But... I feel like this video has gotten long enough. I talk a lot. I try to include more footage of me actually reading and that kind of thing. I will be posting my first reading vlog this Friday, hopefully, so I can hopefully get input for what y'all like to hear, what y'all like to see in reading vlogs. Do you like to see normal daily stuff? Do you just want book content? Daisy is fussing for her food as she typically does at this time of night, well, this evening, so yeah, just let me know what you like, what y'all maybe don't like, what's more entertaining, what are you more likely to skip through, that kind of thing. I'd be really curious to know because I just watch them randomly. Like, I don't really have something I particularly really like or not. So let me know y'all's thoughts. And thank you so much for watching. If you've made it this far through the video, thank you. I hope you enjoyed it. 
Do let me know y'all's thoughts and opinions on reading blogs. Daisy says hi and bye, and I will see y'all next time. I am Lindsay from the blog Books for Christian Girls at blogspot.com, where there's a new review every Monday and Friday. I try to post a new video on this channel every other Friday, and then I'm also on Instagram quite often and TikTok, trying to do better and Goodreads every day. So I will see y'all here, there, and everywhere. Have a blessed, wonderfully blessed rest of your day. Bye!